Can this little low-powered mini PC create the perfect firewall, or will it fail to achieve our one gigabit throughput need for speed? Let's find out. Hey out there, home labbers. We've been on the search for the perfect piece of hardware to act as a dedicated PFSense or OpenSense firewall for John's home network build. After searching eBay, we came across this guy right here. This is the Zotac ZBox CI327. This little passively cooled NUC sized mini PC comes with four gigs of RAM, a 32 gig hard disk, and runs a low powered N3450 Celeron CPU, which has four cores, four threads, a six watt TDP, and runs at 1.1 gigahertz to boost to 2.2 gigahertz. What makes this very promising as a perfect little firewall box is not only its compact size, but also this. This little guy has two physical one gig ethernet ports, which typically on a mini PC or NUC sized box is unheard of. Oh, it's also got Wi-Fi, which might work with PFSense, but we won't hold our breath. The box also ships with Windows 10 Home. Let's open this little guy up and see what it looks like inside. The bottom of the case is held together with four screws with rubber feet over them that came off with a little pressure. Once open, we can see just how compact the Z-Box is inside. The layout is very similar to what we'd expect from an Intel NUC or an Asus Mini PC. On the bottom, we see two sodium slots with one slot already occupied with four gigs of DDR3L1600 RAM. While four gigs is more than enough to run our firewall, it's nice to know that a user could toss in more RAM if they wanted to upgrade it. On the bottom left, we see the mini PCIe Wi-Fi card, which is an Intel dual band wireless AC3165, which technically is supported by BSD and should show up in PFSense, but we won't be using it. In the last user serviceable part in the Z-Box, on the top left, we have a 2.5 inch SATA connector for adding an additional SATA SSD to the system as well. Again, the built-in 32 gig SSD is more than enough for a PFSense install, but it's nice to see the option to add more storage if you needed it. So what did this little wonder cost us, you asked? Try just a scant $149.99 on eBay. And that's quite a steal when you compare it to the price of the NetGate 1100, which is the entry-level hardware firewall from NetGate that goes for 200 bucks. In this video, we're gonna install PFSense on the Z-Box, get it up and running, and then we'll test the network throughput to see if we can run those two one gig NICs at line speed using iPerf. Will this little box be the perfect firewall? Let's find out. We released a video a few weeks back on how to install PFSense, so if you're looking for a step-by-step -step guide on how to install it, check that out. On the Z-Box, right after boot, we spammed the F8 key to get to the BIOS boot screen, selected the USB boot stick, and started the install. After accepting the EULA, we installed PFSense in UEFI boot mode and formatted the disk using UFS. The installation then wrote the file system and files to disk. On first boot, PFSense asks us which NICs are to be assigned to which roles. We chose to assign RE0 to WAN and RE1 to LAN, and the installer completed the final tasks. BSD, the OS that PFSense runs, names the interfaces RE0 and RE1 because the NICs in the box are made by Realtek. The entire install, start to finish, was about six minutes, and it even plays us a little tune when it finishes booting up. Okay, let's log into the web UI for the first time. The default user is admin, and the default password is pfSense, all lowercase. Once logged in, we ran through the first time setup wizard, gave our firewall a name and domain, set our time zone, configured our WAN settings, defined our LAN address and range, change the default admin password, and away we went. By default, PFSense will function as a NATing firewall out of the box between the WAN and LAN interfaces without any configuration necessary. PFSense also starts a DHCP server on the LAN interface and uses the private address range of 192.168.1.0/24 unless you change it to something different during the setup wizard. All is well here, let's test throughput. The most important thing here is to whether this little Celeron has enough horsepower to push 1 gigabit throughput through its two NICs at the same time. Since NetGate themselves claims you need to have multiple cores and a 2 GHz clock for 1 gigabit connections and beyond, this test will make or break whether the Z-Box can handle the throughput. We'll be testing using iPerf3 to test TCP throughput through our little Z-Box mini PC. We'll start an iPerf server on a PC outside of the firewall and connect to it from a PC behind the firewall. As the results show, this little Celeron has no trouble passing packets through at line speed with a max average throughput of 949 megabits a second. We're right where we should be. So where does that leave us? Well, this little box looks to have all of the hardware performance needed to make a fantastic mini firewall. It flawlessly handled moving packets at line speed and looks to have plenty of performance overhead left to handle additional packages we'll be installing later. For $149.99, you get essentially an enterprise-grade firewall for less than NetGate's entry hardware, which says something. 
If you're looking for a standalone piece of hardware to run firewall operations for your home lab, this is a great place to start, especially if you're not the type that likes to virtualize your firewall software. Tell us what you think of this video. We would love to hear from you. Would you like to see more testing? Let us know in those comments below. If this is the first time you've seen us, subscribe. Do it right now. We're on Twitter and Instagram, so go follow us and be all social. And finally, we have a Discord we'd love to have you join. Talk about the videos we make, home lab, and so much more. It's a great community and we'd love to have you. Thanks for watching and we will see you again soon.